Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking out the Daredevil. We're back at Chandler's BMW and we're taking out the all new for 2021 BMW S1000R. Let's go. This one guys, this is the R Sport and it's the M Sport pack on top of that. So we've got all the toys to go through today. But just to start with, it is keyless ride. Push button there, there's your graphics. Okay guys, if you're not familiar with the format, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it for a short ride, stop, do a proper walk and talk of the bike, show you the features, functions, go through the pricing, what's cool, what's new, and then we go for a proper ride. Let's get it. I tell you what, we have been truly blessed by the weather gods today, guys. <laughs> it is gorgeous out there. I can't wait to take this for a proper ride. You are gonna love this one. She is absolutely loaded. All the goodies, pretty much, all the goodies. She's proper light, this one, guys, proper light. I mean, even fully fueled, oil, full tank of fuel, in its standard trim, it's 199 kg. I mean, I'll go through all the stats. This one's the M, so we're closer to 194 kg. Forged wheels, man, looks awesome. I'll tell you what, I've been looking forward to taking this one out for ages. Yesterday I took out Yamaha MT-07, so it's going to be excellent to do a bit of a back-to-back. -back. Yeah, this is awesome. The reason I'm so excited for this one is because it's a bit of a mix between, I guess, an S1000RR and my XR, right? Um, it leans a lot more towards the sporty side for sure, right? So foot pegs are a bit higher up, definitely. They're more like the RR, to be fair. Um, bits of the RR chassis. The bars, although they are straight, flat bars, they're quite low down, okay? So it is a bit more of a leaning forward position, but it's not as extreme as with clip-ons in an RR. But yeah, what an absolute peach. So this one, guys, just quickly, being that it's the R Sport, you've got cruise control. So you just flick that switch across and hit set, okay? And there she is. And you can just manipulate on the left there, up or down. I'll just turn her off for now because we're going to come off here. Oh yeah! <laughs> Woo! What a treat today, guys! What an absolute treat! Oh man, I love being up here when it's like this. It is just awesome. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, we got a treat ahead, guys, because we've got some really cool roads. We've got a mixture of different roads and uh yeah absolute quality we'll cover a bit of town we'll do you know a bit of country roads national speed limit and then we'll head back to chandler's there you go for the purpose of this test ride i've put our traction control back on <laughs> hopefully you guys can see that all right it was a trade-off between showing you more of the screen and showing you more of the road right i thought you'd pick the road a bit more <laughs> okay guys so we're here now a lovely place to do a bit of a walk and talk so what i'm going to do i'm going to change the mics change the cameras get more comfortable and then we'll do a proper tour of the bike go through features function spec price you name it and then we'll take it for a ride let's go all righty then so guys this is the all new 2021 bmw s 1000r this is a super stroke hyper naked and it starts from £12,000 for the base model. But for the base model, you still get a ton of stuff as standard. So, of course, you've got all your ABS on there. You've got your switchable rider modes. You've got an absolutely beautiful 6.5-inch TFT at the top there. Styling-wise, absolutely on point. Adjustable suspension, yeah, you name it. It's absolutely loaded. You can go up to the Sport R version, which I probably would recommend because you get a ton of equipment with it as well. And I'm going to go through that, so don't worry. And on top of all of that goodness, this one's got the M performance package on there as well. So we've got the forged wheels and all the goodness. But again, I'll go through it. So let's start with, you know, the wheels and running gear then. So you've got twin ventilated discs at the front there. So they're 320 and you've got the BMW four pot calipers on there. And I run these on my XR. I can tell you the stopping power is immense. So don't worry about it being branded. These are absolutely awesome. 
Coming around to the back there, you've got Brembo single caliper on there, and that's a 220 ventilated disc as well. So again, absolutely fantastic. Regarding wheels and tyres then guys, these are 17s front and rear and these are the M forged alloys on there as well, so absolutely awesome. Uh, rubber wise you've got Dunlop Sport Smart front and rear and again fantastic tyre, loads and loads of grip. We're going to do a mixture of roads so I'll test out the handling further as we go. Styling cues I think are absolutely on point, you've got everything that you need on here, you've got the belly pan on there, you've got the side bolsters here for the chassis, engine covers looks absolutely awesome. Revised tank design as well. Revised rear end as well here. These are functional air vents, you know, for downforce and all the rest of it. Here's your M seat, which is part of the M performance pack as well. And here's how you get into the back there. And you've got a little bit of storage in there. But on this one as well, where you've got the pillion cover, this is where you can mount potentially a GoPro, which is quite handy. So front and rear for track, entirely up to you. Right, coming on to the lighting in, guys, it's LED all round, front and rear. You've got this beautiful design at the front now. You've got these projection LED headlamps on there. Being that this one is the R Sport as well, you've got this R logo in there, daytime running light, and I think it's absolutely awesome. I haven't tested it at night, but I run this similar kind of lighting system on my XR, and I can tell you it's immense. There's the indicators for you there. And then coming around to the back, again, nice tidy unit in the back there, all LED and integrated, very, very nice. So yeah, looks-wise, very, very nice indeed. Now, this one is Euro 5 compliant, and we'll come on to the engine in a second. And being that this one is the M Performance or M package on there as well, we've got the Acroprovic rear can on there and it makes a lovely noise. So pricing wise, I'm going to do some cuts so you can see it as we go. This one starts from just over £12,000, it's £12,055. And you know, for the base spec, of course, you get the traction control, uh, six axis IMU, so that's lean sensitive for ABS and the braking as well. You get the LED lights on there. You get the riding modes, which is rain, road and dynamic. I'll do a bit of a deep dive on that as well for you as well. Um, the TFT, obviously, that comes as standard as well. And you also get a data tool stealth tracker unit, which check at your point of buying as well. But I've got it on mine. And it's awesome. There's an app for it as well. So you can track all your journeys and speed. When you go up to the R Sport version then, so that's basically 14 grand. And I probably would recommend going for that version because you get a whole lot more equipment with it. You're going to get that daytime running light, like I mentioned at the front there. You're going to get the Headlight Pro, so cornering lighting on there as well, which is pretty useful. Gear Shift Assist Pro, so you've got the Quick Shifter, and I would definitely, definitely recommend having that on this bike. You also get the Cruise Control as well, so that's just located in here. That's very, very cool. Uh, keyless Ride, so the keys in my pocket, I'll show you that when we start it, but that's pretty cool. The tank here is lockable though, so... For those who don't like to have that, yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from. I've had my niggles with mine, to be fair. But, yeah, so key to get to there, no drama. You get USB charging point under the seat on the Sport version as well. You also get the dynamic damping control unit as well. So you can see where it's part electronic there, semi-active. What that means is when you go through the rider modes, you can change, and it's going to either make the suspension more plush. You can adjust the rebound, obviously, the damping control on there as well. So, yeah, fantastic setup to have. And yeah, they call it an engine spoiler. I think it might be more like a belly pan type setup as well. But yeah, you get that on the Sport as well. Okay, so just to cover some parts of the M package then, that's an extra £2,800 on top of the Sport. But you get the colour scheme, which is absolutely awesome. You get that Acroprovic can on there as well. You get the M seat, which is awesome. You get this M performance chain down there. You get a GPS lap trigger timer and you get the lightweight battery. So yeah, very cool package there, and you get quite a lot for your money, and it really kind of completes it. So I guess you're looking at around 17 for the ultimate version of this bike. If money is no object, you can go for the carbon wheels as well, but you're getting close to a 20 grand bike by the time you've added on all your toys. But again, it depends on how deep your pockets are. Right, just want to go on to suspension then. So I've basically got a similar setup on my bike. So these are 45 mil upside down forks, and they are semi-active on this model as well so dynamic damping control on there and at the back yeah you've got fully adjustable there so that's preload damping yeah fantastic you can really kind of make it your own right so that was a bit of a tour of the outside bits of the bike then if we come to some of the switch gear i mean yeah probably a bit biased because i've got a similar setup myself but i do find these very very easy to use you've got the scroll wheel here system there's your menu button because this one it has got dynamic damping control as well, this is where you can adjust your suspension and make it obviously harder or softer. Turn off traction control completely. Indicators, horn. That's your daytime running light with the R logo, which is pretty cool. Cruise control in there. And coming around to here, there's your headlight and flasher, okay? 
On this side, pretty straightforward, obviously accelerator and brake, you've got adjustment on there as well. Heated grips, now you get that on the R Sports, so that's pretty cool. Here's where you switch your rider modes, so between your rain, road and dynamic, and dynamic pro when it's unlocked, which it is on this one, so I'm going to show you that. Kill switch and ignition. Here, if you go for the e-call button, here's where you can have your SOS, you know, called if you need it, so, you know, option to consider. But yeah, I think she looks super, super smart, so let's take a look at the system as well. Okay, so this one is keyless ride, so push the button there. And what you get is a lovely R logo, which will come up. And there we go, this is your main system on here. So just to cover it off quickly then, obviously you've got tachometer, speedometer here. Up here you've got chip computer, which you can cycle through just using this menu button. So if I make some changes, MPG, average speed, tyre pressure, tank range in miles, tank range in bars. So that's pretty handy to have. And you can change that on the fly whenever you want to. Over here, you've got your gear indicator, you've got your time. And up the top here, this is which riding mode you're in. So currently we're in road. Again, you change it from here, and I'm going to do that on the ride as well. And you can do it on the fly, which is pretty cool. But that will change between rain, road, dynamic, and dynamic pro. Now, I won't do a full deep dive because it will take us a long time. I have done one on my XR. So if you want to see that video, it's already on YouTube. Search it out. It's in the XR section. But it's very, very similar. So you've got six and a half inch TFT. Push down on the menu button here. It's going to bring you into your main system setup. So you can scroll through using this left and right. Okay, just like this. My vehicle, we're going to that one quickly. Here's where you can see stats and figures on the bike at a glance, which is pretty cool. And you can do that on the fly. Onboard computer, trip computer, and tire pressure monitor as well. So if you go for the R Sport version, which you can see where this is going, you're gonna get all the toys. I probably just would recommend that one. Push up on here, go along. And if you push down, and again, you can do this on the fly, this is your sport dial. So. I really like this setup, to be fair. Again, you've got a speedometer, but you've got a tachometer in the middle, which is pretty cool. And down here, you've got lean sensitive or lean angle recorder there. So how far you've been over on either side. And that's pretty cool. And you can get into a game of how far over I've gone. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you. On the left hand side, digital traction controls. So this is how much force is being applied, how much is coming in. I barely ever see that happening on a bike here. So if you are using it, you're pushing hard. On the right hand side, here's your brake force as well. So again, you can see how much you've used as it comes in. Outside temperature, automatic running lights. Again, that was this one here. So you can switch it on or off if you need to. I tend to keep them on, why not? Hopping out of that menu then, here's where you can set up your nav because you can get the My BMW app or the My Ride app on there as well. And I'll do some cuts to it, but you can have turn by turn navigation. So you don't need a separate unit at all. You don't even need to put your phone on there whatsoever. Just simply pair your phone with Bluetooth, get the app on there, you can set your journeys and just crack on. You can even have it in the back there while it's charging and you can just relax. Media, so if you've got a headset that's gonna work with it, you can basically have microphone and music. Same for calls as well, if you've got a comms unit, that's pretty awesome. Now you can set racetrack mode on, but something I wanted to show you, if we go into vehicle settings, go through the lights, you can do shift light and configuration, but this is the one I wanna show you. So dynamic pro riding mode. So Remember you've got three as standard, you've got rain, road, and dynamic. Rain is basically reduced power, loads of traction, very safe. Road is plushest suspension feel, a bit more forgiving on the throttle, it's just a bit more relaxing ride. Dynamic sharpens everything up, but dynamic pro is your custom mode and you're only gonna get that on the sport version. But let's have a look at it because this is why you might wanna have it. If we go into it, you can custom change all the settings for your engine, braking, traction, wheelie, and ABS. And I'm not going to go into every single one, but just to give you an idea, if we go into engine here, you can customize it. So on the scroll wheel, we'll just go up and down. So level four is the sim same as rain, basically. So it's reduced down. If we go into three, it's a bit like road, basically. If we go into two, it's a bit like dynamic. If you go into one, you've got basically full power, you know, balls to the wall, acceleration, maximum torque. And that is why you're going to want to have Dynamic Pro, because if we go back out, you can do a similar thing with engine braking, traction control. You can also turn that off fully here by holding this. And also wheelie control, right? So if you go into Dynamic Pro, you can set the level that you want. So we can have it as a bit of, you know, stability there, or maximum stability on level three. Level two is a bit of, level one's a little bit of, turn it to zero, it's completely off, right? So. Full on, fun times and hooligan machine, do whatever you want to do. 
Just to finish off something as well, you've got the flat bars on here and they're nice and wide, so they're wider than the clip-on variants. And the running position, it's a bit more sporty than you might think for a naked, so the pegs are actually quite high. They're more like a double R to be fair. And if you look at the tubular chassis design, this is all pretty much RR from their back. Engine wise, this is basically the same as an XR. So the origins of it was from the RR originally, although it is with the emission of the shift cam technology. So it makes 165 horsepower at 11,000 RPM and 140 Newton meters of torque at 9,250. So yeah, absolute powerhouse. You've got tons of power there throughout the rev range. In fact, it makes more torque than an RR. So an RR's torque is 100 Newton meters. This is 114 from lower down and through quite a large part of the rev range, but obviously the higher end is where the RR is gonna, you know, keep on pulling. So yeah, huge power and fantastic for a variety of roads, but in comparison to a few other nakeds that are out there at the moment, not only is this cheaper in terms of its price, it's also in some respects a bit more capable because of where those foot pegs are positioned just out of the factory, out of the box, if you like, you can do a bit more with it. But it, again, just to kind of balance things out, it's a bit more of a sporty ride than others. So I guess it depends on what you want to go for, really. Yeah, but overall, fantastic feel. We'll go into more detail on the ride in a minute, but it's a balance between an RR and an XR, and I think you'd love it. So if you're in the market for one of these, throw a leg over. Speaking of which, that's what we're going to do now. So I hope you enjoyed this bit. Let's go for a proper ride now. I'll do a mixture of roads, really go for it. All right, guys, that's the walk around done. I hope you like that bit. Now for the exciting part. Let's take her for a proper ride. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, baby. Right. So I want to mention quickly, I am six foot four just for people that ask, because it's good to know the seat height on this is 830 standard, but there is a low option at 810 and there's a high option at 850 mil. So again, you can find something to suit. No drama whatsoever. OK, right. So key the start, press it down. There's that pop-up, very nice. Ignition over here. Boom. Oh man. We wanted to get out one of these for ages. And the weather in the UK the last few weeks has been a pig, but look at it now. Oh yeah. Alrighty then. Let's go. <laughs> So I'm starting her off in road mode, if you can see there, guys. We'll just get her warmed up. And then we'll go to a better dynamic. But man, look at this today. We have truly been blessed. That is absolutely awesome. What weather for it. So we're going to do a mixture of roads here, like I mentioned. And this is the more fun bit. Although, you know, techie bits, I get a lot of compliments on those as well. But we're going to take a left up there, go through the dike bit of town section, come out nearish, you know, Shore Airport type way, back on the dual carriageway and back to Chandler's BMW. And as we do, we'll go through the modes, we'll do a bit more talking. And yeah, let's have some fun. <laughs> and that's in road mode with, yeah, about a quarter throttle. She is keen as mustard, guys. Yeah. So let's just run through a couple of the stats then. Base model weighs in at 199 kg. And if you go for the M Sport, if you like, M Performance packages on there, you can get it down to 194 kg. So it's pretty light, I would say, for a bike like this. And it does feel light. It's not necessarily the lightest, but it has a massive advantage over those hyper nakeds because a lot of the hyper nakeds or hyper tourers even, some of those, they're 220, 225 kg, right? So this has already got a massive head start. And if you go for the M pack on there as well, reduce it down to 194, you can probably get 20, 25 plus kg advantage on those already. So I guess where I'm going with it is you've got tons of power on this bike and because it's lighter than those other ones, it's more playful, you know? And I think for day-to-day -day riding for most people, you'd probably have a bit more fun on this. 
The trade-off with this against some of the others, maybe they're a bit more relaxed. This is a bit more sporty. In the end of the day, that's what they're going for. They want to be a performance, sporty, fun to ride machine. So I think they've done a great job with it because, you know, it's styled incredibly well. You've got some of the very best technology on the market in this bike. It really is awesome. One of the very best screens as well. That TFT and the system to use. Yeah. Genuinely is one of the best. It is very, very good. As I say, check out the deep dive video I've done if you want to see it in a bit more detail. It runs through kind of pretty much everything. Now, I might have mentioned I run an XR myself, okay? So this engine is basically identical. It makes exactly the same horsepower, exactly the same torque. Although for this bike in this year, it is all new. So don't be fooled by the old one making exactly the same horsepower. This is an all new engine. So don't forget with this one, they made it lighter. They made it Euro 5 compliant. They gave it more torque. It was reduced emissions, but they basically improved it in every way. And as I said as well, you've got more torque on this than you have on an S1000RR pretty much all the way through the rev range. So if you're going out with your mates, unless they're going into, you know, super fast Rossi territory, you're going to pull out of the corners probably better than they will. So being that, again, this is the our sport, we've got the quick shifter up and down. And if you haven't used one of these before, <laughs> they're amazing. They're so, so good. Oh, I'm glad he was going round. So we're going to take our left here through Poynings. And we're going to behave, because it is 30 pretty much through most of this. So this is a fantastic little loop that we're going to do here, because... And we'll do a bit more of the sweeping roads as well, of course we will. But you've got, obviously, the sweeping bit up there, which is nice. It's just easy to kind of ease into. Through here, we've got the town riding, and... You know, it's a little bit bumpy through here as well. So again, you can test out what it's like to simulate town riding, if you like. And so far, I would say, yeah, you know, it's very, very good, actually. It's very comfortable. Um, the position's a bit more forward than my XR, but it's not as extreme as an RR. So it really is that kind of mix in between. And if you basically wanted... Let's take it easy through here. Let's get people flying out of that corner. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to mix between an XR and an S1000 RR, here she is. Because you've got bags of power on this. Superb comfort, lighter than an XR. You know, in terms of modding as well and other bits you might want to do to it in the future, yeah, world's your oyster. Although, as I say, if you go for the sports and if you go for the M package on top of that, you've got your Acra can. Thanks, chap. Yeah, you've got an absolutely stunning bike. Sounds great, looks great. Filled to the brim with all of the very best gadgets and technology. Absolutely awesome. Right, so this section down here, as beautiful as she is, opens up into a national. So when we get out of here in a second, I'm gonna give it some beans. We're not gonna go crazy, but I do wanna show you what the bike's about. Here we go. <laughs> Literally, it's like quarter throttle, guys. Quarter throttle. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. You've got so much punch. So basically, from around, I would say, 6,000 RPM, she really, really comes alive. The valves in the exhaust system open up, and that's where your peak torque is going to start to come in, and it will max out at 9,250. Let's give it a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's just get down to the limit again. So depending on what you might want to be using this for, it's a really good jack of all trades, because not only is it comfortable, it does lean towards more sporty, I'll give it that. But it's a, such an easy bike to ride, you know. It's not as demanding as a super sport. It's a lot more sporty than a sports tourer, I would say. And the suspension and feel compared to mine, although it is very similar, as you can probably tell from my voice, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more firm. But that's what you want from this kind of bike, right? You want it to be sporty. 
You can turn off the ABS on the rear as well if you go into the custom modes. So you can do lots of sporty things. You can do your skids, you can do your wheelies. Do all your stunting on this bike, no drama. Things you might want to add to it, because there are a plethora. Um, maybe get like a little sport screen on the front and just kind of finish it off a little bit. But if you're going for the R Sport, hold on. You alright darling, no worries. Put away in second, no drama for this bike. <laughs> Pretty much just clutch out. Um, yeah, you can really kind of make it your own. I probably would say stick an N-Can on one of these or go for the M Sport packs. It gives it a bit more character. The standard cans can be a little bit quiet, but they're still throaty. So again, national speed limit up here, guys. I will just get around the corner because you want to see if there's horses or cyclists down there before we give it too many beans. Ah, we good. Oh, he says. Here we go. Yeah, check that out, man. What a sound. Beautiful. Nice, man. This route is absolutely stunning, I tell you. I absolutely love it. And even though we shoot in 4K60, I swear the camera doesn't pick it up like it does to the naked eye. The colours through here, the lighting, absolutely awesome. The handling is so precise. Yeah, like a scalpel, honestly. Precision, beautiful. <laughs> wow! I tell you what, that done off, go for it. Yeah, that's a lovely noise. And to be fair, we are kind of barely taking it into the territory where she really screams. When we get on the more open roads as well, I'll give it more beans. But through the twisties, yeah, man, she is immense fun. We're not even in dynamic anyway. So when we get through this section down here, I'm going to switch it before we head out. But yeah, even in road, very sporty, great sounds. Right, so crash course then. Let's just get to this junction. I'm looking at the road, by the way, but down here, there's your mode. So if you can see it, dynamic, dynamic pro. That's what we're going to put it in. Hey chap! Woo! Yeah, so already I can tell you with minimal throttle. Hey chap! Yeah, that's really sharpened things up. Oh! And now you get a little... Hey! You get a little backfire as well. That's naughty. Yeah, nice. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So when you put it into dynamic then, we've gone for, you know, give me all the power mode on this one. Pretty much most of the restrictions off. I'm not doing wheelies though. <laughs> right? Not intentionally anyway. <laughs> but you can turn off all of the support. So yeah, if you want to be a stunter, hey man. Then yeah, you can do exactly what you want on this bike. No drama whatsoever. She's just so poised though and easy. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And I love the styling of it, I really do. It's a lovely view. There's that quick shifter down. Oh look, you get a little burble on the downshift as well now. So can you see the difference between the modes? It is quite significant. Road makes it just a jack of all basically. Dynamic makes it, you know, more sporty. Dynamic Pro yeah, you can set it to make it whatever you want, but ultimately you might as well make it your performance focus version, right? Because you're gonna get sporty from Dynamic anyway. Dynamic Pro, make it, you know, exactly what you want, set it up how you want. And then every time you get back on that bike, you know that's your mode. And obviously having the rain mode there as well as a backup, that's handy to have, just in case you need it, or 
you know, let's just say you've just got the bike and you're fairly newest to riding, who knows, and you want to just kind of scrub in the tyres, you know, wearing your components a little bit, you can start it in rain mode. I promise you they are still super quick, even in rain. Super quick. It's just going to be a bit more forgiving. But of course the engine's triple nine cc anyway. Absolute belter. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. So I'm going to go right and we're going to do a bit more cornering. I don't want to take her back yet to be honest. I'd imagine though on a track, oh, these are going to be phenomenal. Don't do it. Thank you. In fact, in a minute I'm going to show you something. Remember I was talking about the valves opening up at six, yeah? Try and get a bit of space. It is national speed limit here. But I don't know if I'm going to get much room so the cars aren't going. Now look, put it back into seconds. What we need to listen to is when it gets past six. Because that's where them valves open up and that's where you get some really naughty sounds. So in terms of performance, you know, if you're going quick on this bike and you want to have some fun with it, you're going to live between the kind of, you know, 6 to 11,000 RPM range. 11 is going to be your red line. And that's where it makes its peak horsepower as well. But maximum torque is at 9,250. So you don't need to wring its neck. And I promise you the fun is going through the gears on this. And you can go through them mighty quickly. Right. Woohoo! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> on a track, this would be an absolute hoot, I promise you. So much talk. When she gets going, that's awesome. Alright then guys, bit of cornering for you here. Nothing too crazy, but just show you how flickable she is. We've got to try and stay within the limits anyway, so... Super comfortable, man. Very precise. Hi hey, chap. Yeah, just effortless really. Best thing I can say, if you're interested in a Super Naked, throw a leg over one of these. Definitely try them out because you get a lot of bike for the money, a lot of bike for the money. Great reliability, great brand. Yeah, serious. Very nice. Yeah, she's lovely, guys. So well planted. Yeah. Pinpoint precision, honestly, scalpel like handling. Point and shoot, point and shoot. And the thing to remember as well with these bikes, when you've got all of that power and torque, that's awesome, but you've also got all of the safety features that go with it as well. So, you know, they're there to kind of help you. You can turn pretty much all of them off on this bike if you want, but having them there is going to teach you a bit more about the bike as you go, because, you know, if you just see that TC like kind of flick on or ABS, maybe you can go, right, that's an area that I can just smooth out a little bit, you know, maybe improve on. But having them there might have meant the difference between, you know, kissing your new bike goodbye and just loading and improving. So it's great to have all of those features there. I really think it is. And you genuinely do have some of the very best bits on the market here. These brakes, I'm running them on my XR and they are absolutely immense. There's nothing behind us. I just want to show you a little bit of the stopping power. <laughs> Honestly, it's so good. Yeah, those brakes are fantastic. And this bike's basically new, right? It's only got like three, 400 miles on it. I think styling wise, they've really hit the nail on this one. She looks beautiful, lovely symmetrical design. The M Sport colors are lovely. Although racing red is very nice as well. But if it were me, I actually like the Hockenheim silver. I think that one looks really lovely. 
And I can imagine that with like a black type exhaust on there as well. Black screen, yeah, very, very lovely. But of course, nod to the M Sport, it is very nice as well. Quick shifter down. Lovely bit of backfire there from the Acra, very nice. <laughs> So yeah, real pleasure to ride. Something I would probably say, having been on the bike for about an hour-ish altogether now, um, if it were me buying this, because I am six foot four, I probably would go for the lower seat. And that might sound weird, but I'm all arms and legs, right? So it would just bring me back a little. And if I was ever going to use it for things like track days and stuff, hanging off of it would be an absolute breeze. But yeah, just to kind of go through the seat height again, it is 8.30 standard, 8.10 is the lower seat, and 8.50 is the higher seat. But yeah, feel of the engine as well and the gearbox, super, super smooth. If you go for the R version, you've got your quick shifter up and down, all your bells, all your whistles, dynamic pro riding mode as well, so you can customise it. Yeah, heated grips, dynamic damping control as well. In fact, let's just show you this quickly push that button there there's your road mode and there's dynamic so not only were we already in a dynamic pro mode now I've made the suspension even harder <laughs> and uh, yeah you know look you can really feel it you can do it on the fly something else you can do on the fly as well just here this is your traction control if I hold that there she is off now some bikes you can't do that these BMWs you still can and again if you're going to be using it for a bit of stunting or if you just don't want any kind of interruptions you can pretty much turn off all of the rider assistance on this bike and have that pure experience. Something else to mention as well BMW increased the length of fourth, fifth and sixth gear so if you are doing more touring or you know longer journeys not only is it going to improve the mpg but it's going to reduce any kind of you know feedback really it makes it nice and smooth and at 70 on the nose you're looking at around 4000 rpm at 70 I'm going to just kind of sneak in here in a minute because we're going to come off. And there's your dual carriageway section, guys. So, yeah, nice and easy, nice and smooth. Of course, you're going to get a bit more wind buffeting, if you like, at those speeds. But it's still comfortable. Quick shifter down. Six, five, four, three, two. And the burbles that go with it. So yeah, look guys, massively impressive bike. Just to kind of summarise one last time, less than 200 kg, regardless of the model that you choose, 165 brake, 140 newton metres of torque, superb handling, excellent brakes, excellent suspension, excellent system, electronics, rider aids, all the toys, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Styling I think is on point, projector LEDs, LED lighting all round, and if you go for the M version, those forged wheels, all the M goodness on there, yeah, she's an absolute cracker, honestly. Really, really is. Very sporty. Superb bike. Throw a leg over and see what you think. But if you're wanting the sportier side of a naked, you should definitely be looking at one of these because it's priced really well. Very, very competitive. You get a lot of bike for the money, a lot of gadgetry, Yes, you don't get a fluttering supercharger. I know they're very cool. <laughs> but you save a bit of money as well, and you probably <laughs> will save your license not going at 200 miles an hour or wherever they go. But if you want a jack-of-all-trades bike that's fun to ride in any situation, on any road, and you've got usable power all the way through the rev range, you should definitely have this on your list. You should go and check one out. Well then gang, that pretty much brings us to the end of this ride. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, maybe give it a thumbs up so that really helps me with the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great to have you with us. 
growing channel. It's free to subscribe, help support me and grow. And we've got a ton of stuff coming up, cars and bikes. So stay tuned for much more. Once again, massive thank you to Ben and the team at Chandler's BMW. You guys are legends. And we've got a ton of reviews coming up for you as well. Contact details for these guys are in the description. And reviewers, thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you on the next one.